do you think it's within the realm of possibility that let's say if you compared all things being equal within the nutritarian approach, let's say you compared a purely vegan diet versus one that contained, let's say five or 10% of calories from whatever the, the animal foods are that you would say are the most benign. So let's, let's take red meat and processed meats certainly out of this. And let's say maybe seafoods and, uh, I don't know what you feel about dairy or, or eggs, but what, so, something like that, five or 10% from animal foods where you're getting some of these proteins, which some people argue are more bioavailable, give you a little bit higher protein intake than, than plant proteins do. W would you be surprised if that diet performed better in all cause mortality than the purely vegan, vegan diet? No, I wouldn't be surprised because um, we're talking about a vegan diet is lacking in certain nutrients that have to be supplemented appropriately to maximize human health and longevity. Zinc, B12, EPA and DHA, iodine, vitamin D, and maybe K2. So there are certain nutrients you more readily absorb from animal products, particularly zinc and DHA and EPA, which people call fish oil, but you have them in salamanders and snakes and frogs and other foods besides fish. But the problem is, is that with, with modern agriculture, we have so much nitrogen runoff that we've caused so much algae bloom with the cyanobacteria that feed off the algae. And now the, the bivalves, clams, oysters, scallops, and mussels have so much BMAA and microplastic compounds and other shellfish and, and um, like lobster and crab that have so much BMAA and, and BMAA and other, and, and plastics. And, and so the point is, is that um, if we probably supplementing a vegan diet with a small amount of omega-3 and BH12 and zinc containing seafood would enhance longevity in a primitive population. But in a modern population, where you've polluted the shores and the coastlines to you, where the average American now has a credit card amount of plastic in their body. And we have, we have um, clusters of uh, Parkinson dementia syndrome and ALS near um, lakes and coastal waterways where people are eating more seafood because of the pollution and the runoff of the of of agricultural chemicals so so now I'm now we're thinking meaning me and my cohorts who think like me other you know that it's better to use a supplemental omega-3 fatty acid because we know that brain shrinkage on a vegan diet if you're not going to if you have no exposure to seafood or EPA or DHA we could have increased risk of dementia or cognitive impairment or even Parkinson's disease from low omega-3 index. So we're talking about supplementing a vegan diet with those nutrients that you would be beneficially getting more of if you ate some animal products, which are mostly B12, zinc, and DHA and EPA. Because the zinc because phytates from plant foods do bind zinc absorption. So I'd rather take my chances with using a vegan diet. And we've seen, and, and obviously my being, I mean, been in practice more than three decades and all my patients who came to me in their 50s and 60s and 70s with heart disease and early cancers and all types of problems and psoriasis and got well and are living between 97 and 100. They're living long lives. They're, they're remarkably living long lives. And so, so we're seeing tremendously ability to live a long life. When you, and so I advise people in my, and I practice myself, I take a supplement of EPA and DHA and I actually sell the supplement because I have it, this is a monopoly on who makes the, the companies that manufacture it, make it for all the vitamin companies. So all the vitamin companies that sell algae-based DHA and EPA, which is a vegan form of fish oil, it's all made by the same company that they just bottle it and market it differently, right? But we make, we, what we do differently is we, I started packing it in glass and keeping it refrigerated in our warehouse before we ship it out so it stays fresher cleaner and fresher source. It's the same stuff. We're just making sure because over six months out at room temperature, you kind of have more rancidity in it. So there yeah. could, there's some idea of rotten fish oil or rotten oils or oils that are at room temperature for too long. Even when you buy oil, it sits, you know, so, so, so we're trying to um, take those arguments and say, should I try to eat a little more animal products to get B12 and zinc or EPA and DHA? But to do that, you'd have to eat enough animal product to assure adequacy in those nutrients that may then give you a higher risk of toxicity. And that's why we're limiting that to a small amount and using supplements to make up the difference, which I think is just more, is more conservative, you know, more, um, 
is safer than as because we know that the other things are more likely when you're exposed to more of these we're seeing these toxins play a role in human health.